Good day, Grade Tens. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. I hope that you've had an awesome week so far and that you're enjoying your Wednesday. In this lesson, we're going to carry on with Euclidean geometry. We're going to go through the midpoint theorem and explain it to you. Um, luckily for us in Grade 10, we don't actually need to know the theorem. It's only get taught to you in Grade 12. We just need to know how to use it. And then we're going to do a whole bunch of exam questions and then we're going to move on to properties of quadrilaterals. OK, so the first thing I want to do is go through the midpoint theorem. And it's actually quite a cool theorem and it's very useful and it's going to be useful from now all the way through till grade 12. OK, so for that reason, I really want you to be able to use it very well. OK, so what we say is that if we've got a triangle, ABC, ACB, ABC, OK, ABC, and we draw a line from the midpoint of the one side. So we find the midpoint of AC and we call it D and we find the midpoint of AB and we call it E and then we join it. OK, so we draw a line from the midpoint of that side to the midpoint of that side. Then this happens. This line will be parallel to that line and it will equal half the length. So if this is X long, OK, this is going to be 2X long. Now, lucky for you in grade 10, like I said, you don't need to prove that. OK, all you need to do is be able to use that in your proofs. OK, so that is a pretty cool theorem. And I will show you, I'll go through some examples where we use it, okay? So, for example, very basic example, it says if CB is 16 units, what is the length of DE? So, it tells us that this is 16 units, okay, units long. So, in this case, it's very easy because we've just looked at this, but what we notice, and what you should notice if the example wasn't just randomly exactly the same as what we've just shown you, you'd look for the fact that DE, D is the midpoint of AC, and E is the midpoint of AB, and we know therefore that DE is a line joining the two midpoints, then this line is going to be parallel to this line, and this line is going to be half the length of BC, so that's going to be eight units long. Okay, so that's a very basic example just to show you how you would put it into practice. Let's do a couple of examples, not just with midpoint theorem, but with a whole bunch of stuff that we've learned so far with respect to um, everything else. I'm just having a look at this. I'm just going to see this is, tells you about a rhombus. Um, yeah, the midpoint theorem. And that the parallelogram, parallelogram. OK, you know what? I'm actually going to skip these three, four, one, two, three, yeah, four, um, because I first want to go through quadrilaterals with you. So what I'm going to do is do this question here, which is about using similarity and stuff we've already learned. And then we're going to go through quadrilaterals and I'm going to go through all the different quadrilaterals. And then depending on where we are in the lesson, then we'll come back and do those questions. OK, so let's go through this question. It says determine the length of EF. They want the length of EF, EF. To the nearest meter, if the following lengths are given, they tell you that CG, CG is 323, CD is 337, and GF is 695. And they tell you that DF is a straight line, okay, which means that that angle there has to equal that angle there, and CE is a straight line. And you're given that angle D equals angle E. And so show all your calculations. OK, so what we're going to be using here is similarity. It's obviously that the similarity is obvious that these triangles aren't identical. They don't fit on top of each other because the one is much smaller than the other. So we're not using congruency. We're going to use similarity. And similar triangles have all three angles equal, all three angles equal, okay? So let's see. So we're gonna say in triangle, and remember we have to do this in the right order. So we say in triangle DGC. So I'm going from, sorry, and triangle. So I'm going from the angle that we've been given to the angle that's in the middle to the other angle. So in the triangle EGF. Do you agree that they told us that angle D was 
equal to angle E. And why was that? Because it was given. So they told us those two angles are equal. They also told us that DF is a straight line and CE is a straight line. Therefore, we can see that that means that um, G1 is going to be equal to G2. And why? Because they are vertically opposite angles. Okay, they're vertically opposite angles. So that means that if this is equal to that and this is equal to that, then it only makes sense that angle C has to equal to angle F. Why? Because the angle sum of triangle, okay? In other words, if this, say for example, was A and that was A and we called this B and this B, then this angle would be 180 degrees minus A plus B, right? A plus B from 180 would give me this. Similarly, this, if we look in this little triangle, is going to be 180 degrees minus A plus B. Okay, easy peasy, right? So what can we say? We can therefore say that triangle DGC is, that's congruent and that's wrong. We want similar. Um, just let me raise. Is similar to triangle EGF and the reason is angle, 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 which you it's pretty obvious because similarity is looking at angles, but let's just put it in just so the teacher can know that we know it. Okay, so that means we can do ratios. So in that case, do you, we want this side here, okay? We want EF, okay? So do you agree that if that's the case, DC over GC, GC, is going to equal, so DC is going to equal to EF over GC, GF. Okay, so we're saying DC over GC has to equal EF over GF. Okay, do we have DC? Yes, we do. It's 337. Do we have DC? Yes, we do. It's 323. Do we have EF? Nope, that's what we're trying to work out. And do we have GF? Yes, we do, it's 695. So now we can take that and pop it into our calculator. So we can say 337 divided by 323 equals, and what do we do with the 695? You take it across and you can multiply by 695. 95 and that will equal 725.12383 now now just let's go back and see what they said they said they wanted it to the nearest meter to the nearest meter so we need to round it off to a whole number so it's just going to be 725 therefore ef equals 725 meters Ta-da! Okay, so that wasn't too difficult, hey? Okay, so now we're going to talk about parallelograms and quadrilaterals. Before we talk about parallelograms, I just want to very briefly talk about quadrilaterals because all of the things we're going to talk about now are quadrilaterals. And all you need to know about quadrilaterals is this. Okay, they're obviously made up of four straight sides. Okay, it's not like a circle or something. It's four straight star sides. The interior angles, the sum of the interior angles always add up to 360 degrees. Okay, and at this point, that's all you really need to know about quadrilaterals, okay? And then they can be broken up into different types like parallelograms, trapeziums, excuse me, rhombus, rhombi, squares, rectangles, etc. So there are special kinds of quadrilaterals and we're going to discuss special kinds of quadrilaterals now. So we're going to discuss the parallelogram. So the parallelogram is pretty obviously because it's parallelogram. It is a quadrilateral, which means there are four sides, with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Okay, both pairs of opposite sides parallel. You know, it's AB is parallel to CD and AD is parallel to BC. Okay, so that is the definition of the parallelogram. There are a whole bunch of other properties of the parallelogram, which we're going to discuss, but that 
is effectively your definition. So let's talk about the properties of a parallelogram. Well, we already know that both sides of the opposite sides are parallel. So in other words, this line here is parallel to that line, and this line here is parallel to that, that line. So both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Both pairs of opposite sides are equal in length. Okay, so what does that mean? That means, I'm just going to change color, that this is equal to this, and this line is equal to this line is equal to this line that CD is equal to AB and also that AD is equal to BC opposite angle about opposite sides are equal there is also one way of doing this no, sorry another way of doing it. both pairs of opposite angles are equal so this is one of the properties that both pairs of opposite angles are equal in other words this angle here angle D equals angle B and angle A equals angle C. And then finding the diagonals bisect each other. So they do cut and when they cut the angles, the diagonals bisect each other, which means this is going to be equal to this and this side here is going to be equal to that. So this would be a bisector, not necessarily perpendicular bisector, but just a bisector. Right, so let's go through the proof. And guys, you need to know these proofs, which is why I'm doing it with you. Otherwise, um, I wouldn't, <laughs> so, um, because they are a bit tedious, but you need to know these proofs. So please learn them. And I don't mean, okay, let me just talk to you about this. What I'd really like you to do when you're learning your proofs is not do what I did at school. When I, when I did at schools, I learned them parrot fashion. In other words, if someone said to me, oh, can you write down the proof of opposite sides are equal? I'd go, yeah, sure. And I would just write it out. Just like, do, 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 do. But I hadn't really thought it through. I had just learned parrot fashion. And that's fine if you have a tendency to learn stuff, okay? But the problem is, the main problem is that, well, there are two problems. One is that you don't get to really understand the maths. And two is that sometimes your memory will fail you and that could be a problem, okay? So what I'd really like you guys to do is I would like you to try and learn it by understanding it, okay? So let's, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so we've got triangle ABC and triangle ADC, okay? And it says in the parallelogram definition line AB, is parallel to CD and BC is parallel to AD. Okay, that is the proof. We're trying to prove the opposite sides are parallel. It says we are, um, and then, uh, sorry, it's given that they're parallel, we are required to prove that they're equal. So it's given that this is parallel to this and this is parallel to that. And we are required to prove that the opposite sides are equal. And it says let AC be the diagonal. Okay, so I'm going to use congruency because if I can prove that, let me just show you. If I can prove that this triangle, well, I mean, there's only really two triangles to do congruency, but if I can prove that this triangle is congruent to this triangle over here, then do you agree? Chances are that we would be able to prove that the opposite sides are equal. Okay, so I'm going to say in triangle, and we might as well go ADC, ADC, and triangle. So we started at the corner, went through the solid one parallel, and then two. So it's going to be CBA. CBA. And you may think, why am I doing this? Why am I being so pedantic? Well, the reason I'm being so pedantic about the order is that if we prove that two triangles are similar, then I don't have to go and draw the triangles again. I can just go look at these things and go, oh, look, AC over AD is going to equal CA over CB. Okay. Or DC over AC is going to equal same as BA over CA. Okay, so it's a ratio thing. So let's go through it. In triangle ADC and CBA, AC is common. AC equals AC because it is common. 
Okay. So therefore, we know that that's equal. Okay, just let's think about this. We're trying to prove congruency. So we have side, angle, side. We've got side, side, angle. We've got right angle, hypotenuse, side. And what else? We've got side, angle, side, 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 side. Um, and we've got side, side, side. Okay, so we now have, that's not side, 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 that's angle, side, angle angle side angle sorry so now we have this side that we have said is equal okay because this is parallel do you agree that that angle there is equal to that angle because they're alternate so we can say angle dca angle d let's try again dca is equal to angle um bac bac and y because it is alternate angles, alternate angles. And then we can also see that obviously then this angle is equal to this angle, same rule. We've got that AD is parallel to CB. So we can say, therefore, that DAC is equal to BCA, BCA. Again, alternate method. Therefore, triangle ADC is congruent to triangle CBA, right? And therefore, AD must be equal to CB and DC must be equal to DCBA. And there you go. So that's one of the proofs that opposite sides are equal. Now we're going to prove that opposite angles are equal, opposite angles. Okay, so we've just proven that opposite sides are equal. Now we need to prove that opposite angles are equal. So again, we're going to use congruency. So we've got this line here. Okay, and I'd like you to try this for just a minute before I teach you how to do it. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is I want you to pause the video well, I'm going to pause it. You're going to carry on watching. Okay, and I'm going to be quiet for just one minute. And I want you guys to prove that the opposite angles are equal. In other words, angle A is equal to angle C. Right, go. Right, so how are you doing? I hope that you have worked it out. You need to be looking at this triangle here, obviously, and this triangle here. And we're trying to prove that the opposite angles are equal. And all we're going to do is we're going to use congruency again. We're going to say, let's use the highlight of the sum. We're going to look at this triangle. Okay. And we're going to look at this triangle over here. Okay, and what we're going to say is, are those two triangles congruent? So let's go through it. Okay, so let's use dark blue and let's use a pen for a change. Dark blue, pen, dark blue. Okay, so in the triangle, so again, I'm going to go from, yeah, I'm going to go D, A, B, D, A, B, and triangle, and let's go through it. It goes double line, single line, um, the diagonal. So it's double line, single line, diagonal, so it becomes B, C, D. Okay, now, do you agree that D, B is common? D, B is common. So therefore, they're both equal. Okay, db is common. So that's nice and equal, okay? We could, if you want to prove that, again, this angle equals this angle and that angle is that angle. Actually, let's do that. So in the triangle DAB, DAB, do you agree angle ADB 
angle ADB is equal to angle CBD, CBD. Um, why? Because they're alternate angles. Okay, you always have to give a reason. So therefore this angle here equals this angle here. Okay, ADB is equal to CBD. Now, we obviously also know that this angle equals this angle. Okay, so therefore we can say that in this yellow triangle, um, ABD is equal to ABD, CDB, CDB, C, CDB, very good. And why it would be alternate angles. Okay, so therefore we know that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. We can say, therefore, triangle DAB is congruent to triangle BCD, CBD, CBD, okay? And if that's the case, then angle A has to equal angle C. So angle A has to equal angle C, and we've just proven it. Right. Now let's prove the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so it's quite a lot of proofs that we have to go through, but there is a reason for it. Okay, so now we need to prove the diagonals bisect each other. So again, we're going to join the diagonals. But grade tens, when you guys draw this in the exams, and obviously you need to use a ruler and a pencil. You cannot, cannot go around drawing pens and using pens and drawing lines squibbly like I've done. You have to, have to, have to use a ruler and a pencil. Okay, so we need to prove the diagonals bisect each other. So what I want to do is we know that diagonals bisect each other. Okay, Let's say if we're looking at this, okay, do you agree that we know that if this is X, then that is X, we've just proven it. And if this is Y, then this is Y, okay? Happy with that? Um, because they're alternate angles. We also know that this angle, yes, yeah, static E equals that static E over there. So then do you agree that that must be 180 degrees minus y plus static e? Okay. This one. Plus static e. Again, this little star. Which means that this one is going to be 180 minus y plus star. And this question here is obviously going to be y plus star. So we now know that this triangle here, that didn't, actually we didn't need to do that. I don't know why I was doing that. I was just in a roll. Okay, so now if we look at that, do you agree? And I will prove this for you in a second, but just let me show you something. If you look at this triangle here, D, C, A, or whatever this is in the middle, D, O, C, and we look at this triangle, A, O, B, A, O, B, can you see that they are actually similar? Okay, well, in fact, they're congruent. How do I get that? Well, we know that opposite sides of diagonals are equal, so we know that this is equal to this. Okay, awesome. We also know that angle X over here is going to equal angle X here, and angle Y there is going to equal angle Y there. So therefore, we can say that this is definitely congruent, and it's angle sum angle. Congruent, angle sum angle. Which means that this line here must equal this line here, and this line here must equal that line there. Okay, so now what I want to do is write that out. So I'm going to say in the triangle AB, and let's call this O, ABO, and the triangle, let's see, we've got star, Y, this thing, so it becomes CDA, CDA. We know that angle BAO, angle BAO 
equals angle um, OCD, OCD, which equals, it doesn't matter, we can call it X, okay, in this case. Um, why? Because they're alternate angles, okay? So we know that those two are done. Check. Then we know that um, y, DC is going to equal AB. Why? Opposite sides, opposite sides. Um, where was I? Sorry, I don't know what happened there. It just went away. It just the sound just went away. Um, opposite sides of where was that? DC, sorry, I'm busy fighting with the computer and I just got lost to us where it was. Okay, so DC is going to be equal to AB. Why opposite sides of a parallelogram? Parallelogram are equal. Okay, we already said that. Okay, so we now know that this is equal to this. We've said that this is equal to this. Okay, we therefore can say that this is equal to this, or we can go that these two are equal because they're vertically opposite. In fact, let's just do that. So we can say A or B, A or B is equal to C or D. C, A, B, oh, that's supposed to be an O, no wonder. A C, O, D, and why? Because they're vertically opposite. Okay, therefore we can say that these two triangles are congruent, and the reason they're congruent, triangle A, O, B is congruent to triangle C, O, D, and the reason is because of, um, side angle angle okay so it's side angle angle therefore we can say that it's pretty obvious that this length here is equal to that length therefore it's equal to a o is going to equal to o c and similarly similarly we can prove we can prove that d o is equal to o b therefore the diagonals bisect each other Okay, now let's talk rectangles. Before we do that, I think I want to go back to a question. Let's see if we can get a nice question on parallelogram. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to use the knowledge on parallelograms and our knowledge on um, lines and angles. Okay, and we're going to prove that AE equals CF. Okay. So what do we know? They tell us that in the diagram A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Okay, so A, B, D, and C is a parallelogram. So what does that mean to it? It means to us that this side is parallel to that side, that side is parallel to that side, and this is equal to this, and this is equal to this. And there are a couple of other things we can say, but let's just see what they've got for us. It says BE equals DF. BE equals DF. Okay, so let me do that in another color just to help us. So we're going to go BE is equal to DF. Okay, they tell you B1 is 40 degrees and D3 is 140. And they want us to prove, let's put that in orange, that AE, they want us to prove that AE is equal to CF. Okay, so when I saw that this side here, that AB was equal to CD, and I saw that they'd given you that EB is equal to DF, I was immediately thinking something to do with um, congruency or similarity. And there they told you, they want you to prove that AE is equal to CF. So we're looking at congruency. So let's have a look at this, okay? We know that this is 40 degrees. Therefore, do you agree that this can be 140 degrees? 
no it's not going to be necessarily just a second let me just erase that okay so we know that that's 40 degrees okay awesome we also know this is 140 degrees so if this is 140 degrees that is 140 degrees why because they're vertically opposite so i'm going to say angle d3 equals angle d1 which equals 140 degrees 140 degrees why because they are vertically opposite vertically opposite that's vertically opposite so it's 140 okay awesome therefore we can also say that d2 is equal to 40 degrees why because um it's a straight line so it's supplementary angles supplementary angles and you can either have gone that way or that way so this is 40 degrees okay now, we therefore know that this triangle has got 40 degrees here, 40 degrees here. We know that EB equals DC, and we know that EA is equal to CF or FC. Therefore, we can say, well, this is up, and, and also, sorry, we're trying to prove that. Okay, so we can also say that CD is equal to AD, and therefore that is, again, these two triangles are going to be congruent. And it's going to be side angle side. Let me write this out for you. So you're going to say in triangle. And it's pretty obvious we have to use these two outer triangles. The simple reason that um, we want to prove that AE equals CF. So in triangle AEB, AEB and triangle. So let's see, we're going to go from the beginning of the blue, from the beginning of the blue to the yellow and then to the red the beginning of the blue the yellow to red so it's going to be dfc okay dfc do you agree that we know that ab is equal to um ca okay ca D A D A B is equal to sorry <laughs> ab is equal to CD, CD, okay? Why opposite sides of parallelogram? Okay, so that's nice and easy. We also know that angle D2 is equal to 90 degrees. Why? Because it was this, I mean, not 90, 40 degrees. 40 degrees, why? Let me show you. We know that this angle here is 140 degrees so then an easy way to do it is just say well these two are supplementary it's on the straight line therefore that is 40 degrees but let me show you how to write that down so let me just make some space and then write that down for you so we're going to say well d2 equals um d3 minusing 40 degrees so if she could pay for so that 40 degrees d3 is going to so d2 is going to be d3 minus 40 i mean sorry so d2 is going to be oh i can't believe i'm struggling with it sorry i'm just struggling with the writing i don't know what's going on today sorry guys let's focus so we've got d3 equals 180 d2 is equal to 180 degrees minus 140 right which is 40 degrees so there you go you now have that this angle has 40 degrees which happens to equal to eba eba which was given which was given okay so we've just said that ab is equal to cd we've also said that this angle is equal to this angle okay and now the other thing that we can say is that eb equals df and that's given i'm gonna have to write up here so we're gonna go eb equals df um and that is given given therefore therefore we can say the triangle EBA, EBA is congruent to triangle FDC. FDC, awesome. And therefore AE has to equal CF in length. 
Okay then, right, so now I think let's do another parallelogram question. This one's got a midpoint and the parallelogram, so let's go through it. It says, in the diagram below, D is the midpoint of side A, B. So this is the midpoint of A, B, and you can see how nice and big A, E, B is, and how it's split up into two equal parts because of this midpoint theorem. It says D, E is produced to F, so DE is produced to F, there it is, such that DE is equal to EF, and CF, CF is parallel to BA, BA, the whole of that. So the whole of this is parallel to the whole of that. Okay, now it says write down a reason why triangle, let's just color this in, shall we? So let's go to the highlighter. And let's get some nice colors. It says, write down a reason why triangle ADE, ADE, is congruent to triangle CFE. Well, this one's pretty obvious and it's actually nice and easy. Do you agree that we actually have been given a whole bunch of information? <sighs> let's get the pen out. Okay. We know that AE equals EC, so we can say in triangle AED, AED, and triangle, um, it really doesn't matter, let's call it FCE, FCE. Do you agree that AD is equal to FC, AD? is equal to FC. Why? Because they've told us. Did they not tell us that? They tell us that DE is equal to, DE is equal to um, EF. Oh no, they haven't told. Oh yes. Um, Hmm, they didn't tell us that, sorry. I can't assume that, so let me just erase that. I thought they told us that. Okay, so this is easy anyway. So what are we doing? We're saying in triangle ADE and FCE, no problem. We know that AE is equal to EC. Okay, we know that AE is equal to EC. Okay, given. They also told us that DE is equal to EF, that DE is equal to EF, EF, EF given. Okay, there we go. And then we know that this angle is equal to that angle because they're vertically opposite. So we know that angle AED is equal to angle and you always want to go in the order that they've been given. So it's single line, angle, triple line. So there'll be single line, triple angle, triple, ang triple line. So it's going to be A, E, D is equal to F, um, E, C. Okay. Why? Because they're vertically opposite. Therefore, triangle A, E, D is congruent to triangle FCE. And why would that be? It would be side, side, angle. Or side, angle, side, side, angle, side. Awesome. So now we have just proven, it says write down the reason why triangle is congruent. Okay, we've just done that, okay. Now it says write the reason why DBFC is a parallelogram. So now they're saying, it's all very well saying that, but we need to now prove that this thing here, okay, let me change color. We need to prove that this thing here, this A, no, they want DBFC. Oopsie, my bad. Here it is. Okay, so we want DBFC. We want D, B, D, B, um, C, F, D, B, C, F. Okay, DBCBF, DBCF, and then we need to prove that it's a parallelogram. Okay, so we know that opposite sides of parallelogram are equal, opposite sides of parallelogram are parallel, uh, one pair of opposite sides of parallel and equal. Okay, so we've got a couple of things going for us. Um, do you agree that we know that? 
we know that these two triangles are congruent. We know that ADE is congruent to FCE, okay? Therefore, we know that this side here is equal to that side. So we can say we know that AD is equal to FC in length and Y proved above. You don't have to write it down. Just the fact that you proved that those two triangles are congruent is enough, okay? Right, so because of that, we now know that, that is equal to that, which is equal to that. So it's one pair of opposite sides being equal. Wonderful. One pair of opposite sides equal. So what do we need to do? We either need to say, okay, let's work out the other opposite side, or what we can do is show that the length of AD is equal to the length of FC, okay? So, I know it says write down a reason, just write down a reason, but I need to, to show you how we were getting it, okay? So now we know that AD is equal to CFE, so those are equal, but this is equal to this, okay? But AD is equal to DB, therefore AD equals FC equals DB. Awesome. Okay, so now we're saying that these are all the same size. Okay, and now finally, we also know that those two lines are parallel because they told us. We also know, or because we know that these two triangles are congruent, so this is equal to this. I mean, this one is equal to this one, and that one is equal to this one. Okay, so opposite angles, I mean, opposite sides are parallel. Therefore, D, B, C, F is a palm, is a palm, a parallelogram. Then it says, hence prove the theorem which states that DE, DE, is half of BC. Sure, okay, and I'm going to stop there because we've kind of run out of time, but we will carry on with this question and do the last bit um, in the next lesson. Have a great day.